but I think I'm gonna need a minute. Uh, support 
uh, and scriptural support to back up what, what the messages are all about. And I like using these plans because it's gift wrapped and it's all set up and it's perfectly able to be presented to you guys and you can follow along with us at the same time. Right. So that's awesome. If you have not have a chance to like us on Facebook, please like us on Real Talk with Martin and Gordon and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the same name. I'm trying to eventually start going from that page exclusively. So please do that for us. Simple. All you have to do is click the, the like button and hit the subscribe button. Easy. Thank y'all for that. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all for that. Man, fellas, how y'all doing today, man? Doing good. Doing great. Bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Man, it's, uh, it's been great, man. We've been doing this thing since last March of 2020 at the onset of the COVID-19 deal. And it started off as a motivational uh, tool to use uh, technology today and social media to give a, a positive message while people was was worried and concerned about the next steps and what was going to happen and what they was facing, the jobs and you know the health and all that. We wanted yeah. to provide something positive on social media, and this is how it burst. And since then, we've kind of been dibbling and dabbling in and out of COVID. Uh, you know, it's kind of having some issues popping up again, but we kind of got removed from that and we continued to go on with the with the show yeah. because it, it was beneficial. It was beneficial to me. And it's, you guys have always yes, professed it's been very beneficial to y'all. And uh, it's helpful. It's like a, a new age Bible study with men. Um, but it's not a, just a men thing. Uh, it just so happened to be it's men. Yeah. yeah. Um, but a lot of people watch us. And please, if y'all are watching live, please don't hesitate to comment anything that we can uh, see, that we can respond to. We'll try to respond to it in real time. If you have questions that we can answer, we will acknowledge those questions live and we'll respond to them in real time. Um, I'm able to monitor you guys so you know how we do it on Real Talk. Um, enjoy, enjoy doing it. It's been awesome, awesome. And I'm um, ready to dive in. But before yes, we dive in, you know we always begin with a word of prayer. And this time, I'm going to let my father lead us as a special yeah. guest. Just lead us in a word of prayer. All right, all right. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and we just pray and ask that you open up our understanding to, yes. to receive what you have for us. But we know that your word will reveal to us the things that we need to do and be practical in our doing. So, Father, we just pray that uh, the information that the, the pastor and the ministers begin to share with us, uh, God is ministering through them to us. Let our hearts be receptive in receiving what is about to be put out. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Most, 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 most. That was a smooth perfect. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. Been doing yeah. like riding a bike, man. Yeah. Like riding a bike. But I'm, but I am privileged to have you on. I know it's been a few it's times awesome. you've been back, and I was like, man, you know, one day you might get a chance to stop on the show. I sent him a few videos, and little stuff like that, oh, yeah. too. But he just so happened to be here today, and it's, it, it happened. So we're gonna <laughs> let it take its natural course. And I'm right. certain before the show, he gonna he gonna he gonna bless you with something. Yeah, he gonna have something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I know he is. So uh, without further ado, man, um, we're gonna start. I'm gonna start off with day one. Day one is entitled "What Does It Mean to Be a Man?" Hmm. Okay, we got the plaster in the building. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Uh, Ariane, Dion, Ray Charles. That's my mom. That's what's up. Good, good, good. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Uh, okay. Day one, what does it mean to be a man? 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 through 14. It says, in the traditions of nearly every ancient culture and some, and some modern tribal cultures, a rite of passage marked a young male's transition from boyhood to manhood. It was a public event that declared to everyone, especially the young male, that he had become a man and would enjoy the privileges and bear the responsibilities of manhood. I never had a moment in my life when I was declared a man. Because I didn't, I felt I had to prove my manhood in whatever way. I was selfish. If it feels good to do it, culture told me. When my son was born, I determined that he was going to have a different experience. But to do that effectively, I had to be able to articulate exactly what he was being called into. What did it mean to be a man? One day, as I was reading 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14 jumped out at me. The English Standard Version reads, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. When I did a mental survey of the men in my life I aspired and aspired to be like, I realized every single one of them exhibited these five marks. Number one, be watchful. I began to see what I began to see that men have a vision. Mm -hmm. Be watchful. Number two says stand firm. Men aren't afraid to stand against the tide when they are resolved in what they believe in. 
you know, you always hear the saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. anything. And it don't always mean that it may be right, but you're going to stand on it. Yeah. That's just what it is. It says, number three says, act like men. You seem like you shouldn't have to say that, huh? <laughs> it, says, it says, act like men. It says, this command is written in the plural. Manhood isn't just an individual journey. Men are team players. That's right. You're going to find out as we read through the lesson why it's very important to have a good group of men that we fellowship with on a regular basis. It's going to talk about not just fellowship with men. It's going to talk about fellowship with good men regularly yes, and, right. and the yeah. importance of it. You, we'll, we'll get to that. It says, number four, it says, be strong. Men understand that they are wired to produce value. Hmm. This man, this means that men work. Yes. And number five says, let all that you do be done in love. Things done in love are done for the sake of others. This means that men are protectors. Hmm. Remember one of the things that we used to talk about in some of the earlier lessons said that if it's not involving benefit, the benefit of others, nine times out of ten, it's not a kingdom thing. Yeah. Right. And it, real yeah. talk, it's yeah. really yeah. not. It's, most, it's yeah. always going to yeah. involve others right. and helping others and, yeah. and doing things for others. So that that's a, a high, high mark to be mentioned as a, one of the uh, categories for mm -hmm. a man. It says these five marks form a code excuse, form a code that defines what it means to be a man. A 15-year-old who exhibits these marks regularly is more of a man than a 45-year-old mm -hmm. who doesn't. So you see, it has nothing mm -hmm. to do with age. Yes, sir. It's yes, time sir. to set a new standard for what manhood should be, or actually to live up to the ancient standard that has been lost. So it was always out there, uh, but we we've, we've gotten away from it. Right. Uh, since various reasons, some things have been systematic and systemic, and then other things are just you got to put it on yourself too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't never like to take the burden and the blame mm -hmm. and just place it where it belongs. Sometimes it's just us. Uh, right. A lot of things we do know is. It's other things at play, but some things is just us. It says no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you've done, you can choose today to be a man. Mm -hmm. So that means it's a choice. Huh? Yeah. So you don't just oh, yeah. automatically just grow into man. Huh? Right. So you know how we normally do. Uh, before I share my insight on it and before I read the scripture to support it, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to, to expound on anything that you heard, read or, or heard up in days one devotion that might have stood out to you. Who in life calls out a man to be a man? I break, I'm gonna break this down, man. A man, most of the time, fathers call out within their sons to be me. Right. A lot of uh, our boys and, and, and that's growing up to be young men. Uh, that uh, they don't grow up to be the men that uh, God is calling them to be because the father is not present. Yeah. So that means that they go to all kinds of other uh, things in their life to they, they go to the streets right. to make them a man. Right. And then the man that then what the streets teach them. It's totally opposite of what the father is supposed to be teaching them. Right. Because the father of the home is supposed to teach value. Mm -hmm. and what, they're supposed to teach structure. Right. They're supposed to teach you how to be a man. Don't be around here, you know, with your pants hanging all right. off your right. behind. Right. You got to come up here and you got, you got to be a straight up man. Right. And the thing about it is I'm glad, you know, even though, you know what I'm saying, I grew up. My mom in a single parent home. My dad was always around right. me right. to to put that in me right. that I needed to be a man. That's right. You need to stand up, do what you have to do, provide, right. protect, whatever you have to do. But you have to do it with honor. Right. That's right. And what the Bible says it didn't say that we had to love our. Mother and father, but he said that we had to honor them. Mm -hmm, for sure. Amen. So our days will be long. Come on, man. Yes, they don't mean that 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 he's talking about an individual day being long. He's talking about a whole society, a whole world. Right. Your yeah. days will be long if yes. you honor. Right. Yes, so where is the honor in the home when you don't have that male structure there? Right. Come on with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and it teaches one of the main things that I know that 
men teach in the household is there's consequences for action. Right. Um, what you what you mean by that? Well, what I'm saying is there's certain roles in the household. That don't mean that a mother might not be trying to do dual roles, dual roles if she is put in a situation where it's it's pretty much impossible for her to be father. They sometimes they say I'm mom and daddy, they're right. not they're just they a do. hard working mother. You know, they just taking on the role of, of, of more than just what she should be having on her plate. But it's hard to duplicate what the man is supposed to do. And, I, and listen, sometimes it ain't even that you're doing it perfectly. Because majority of the time, you're not. It's that you're there, and when you do mess up, he sees you mess up. You tell him why you messed up, and you get back on track. That's what right. makes a man, to me, more than just seeing somebody perfect. Because perfect is not what you... That's not no, realistic no, anyway. Man. I think it's more valuable for a young man teenager, whatever age, to see his father ups and downs. But even when he, no matter if he's up or down, he's still steadfast in his belief. He's still righteous. Yes, he still has dignity. And he still he still gets through those, getting through a hurdle in a tough period shows so much more to that child than it does when you're always up. Mm -hmm. Tell your teacher a lot more. Mm -hmm. Because life ain't gonna never be where he's always up. Right. And I think, it, I think what kids are missing today is they're missing the consequences for their action. That's why they're acting emotionally. Right. Uh, we, we, we all have emotions, but we know women are wired more emotionally and men are supposed to be more logical. Right. And what I'm saying right. is when they have these single mother household, she's not, she's doing her best she can. That's right. But a lot of times the responses that she gives and, and presents to them is an emotional response. One, two of the things that I always bring up that my dad used to tell me all the time about the two R's, and they mean all the difference in the world, the reaction, or the response. That's and responses don't mean that it's going to be right away. That's right. It just means that you're going to take the time that's necessary before you come back with a reply. Right. A reaction is always directly behind an action. And a lot of times you have not given it much thought. And so you never know what you're going to get out of that. And so our young men, is, to me, they're not being taught consequences for actions. And they're not being uh, pushed in their right. mind frame, I'm just right. saying, outside to think about what's going to happen That's when right. I do this. That's so right. they do this emotionally, and then they deal with what happened after that. And most of the time, they're not ready for what comes behind that's the right. action. That's and right. I think that that's one of the things that's lost more when fathers are not present or at least not around or not able to be involved in their children's life because they that structure part, that consequence for your action thing. You know, we always, and they make you think about stuff. They're always talking about that, and I just noticed that that don't mean some women are not able to do that. But in general, there are things that are role-specific. And I think that's one of the things that fathers provide in a family household setting. Anybody else had anything they want to share on that? To, to, to me, comments. Uh -oh. go ahead. No, go ahead. To me, uh, what is a man? When it comes to my mind, I I looked at myself. When I found the Lord, uh, that's when I really found out being a man. It's long suffering. Mm. It's patience. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong, but strong in the Lord, because there's gonna be some things you're gonna stand for, no one around you gonna understand. Mm -hmm. But you gotta be that man and stand, even though you may look like you're walking on the wrong way. Mm -hmm. But you're walking on a way that consists of a man of God. Mm -hmm. See, so 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 what I found out what's in a man is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. when I look at a man, I look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's sacrifice. It's it's honesty. It's 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 being loyal to to those who you love for yeah, the right man. reasons right. in your life. On, and, and it's also this right here. You have to you have to know that being a man is required of everything in you to watch out and look for your people, your loved ones, your circle, your household. And it don't matter if they don't see, they can't understand, they may not see, they may not have that vision. But because you are a man of God, you have this spiritual instinct that yeah. you that God that God imparts in you once you become a believer. So what happens is you gotta stand on the word, you gotta stand on what you believe in because you know what's best for your family. And if hardship <laughs> come, if the whole house fall in, you have to be a man. By standing up and trusting God and believing that, okay, if I do this, what the mm -hmm. words say do, then I can trust the promises of God. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna open up, and I'll be able to see my life better. I'll be able to bless my family. My family's gonna be covered in the blood of Jesus. Being a man is simply putting yourself back 
being unself, being mm. being uh, selfless. Okay, mm. just like Jesus. It's a, it's like when, when when you go to the store, well, you can't just think of yourself. You got yeah. what do my wife need? What do yeah. my son need? What do my daughter need? Are all the bills up? Being a man is caring about your family first. Right. It's family first. When I transitioned from a boy to a man, it hit me out the blue, and it just I just it just hit me a couple years ago. I'm honest, I'm being serious because I thought being a man was standing up for, for, for the wrong reasons, shooting, making money, um, having a lot of women. I thought being a man was being fly, having having cash. I thought being a man was not, was not backing down for anything. But being a man is sometimes backing down because you have a family to provide for. Right. Being a man is making the best decision for your family. Right. Being a man is an unselfish act. And it's a character that requires the spirit of God so that you can make it a completion for you and your family as you on your destiny. That's what being a man is for me. Yes, sir. We got a couple of comments, man. Pastor Jackson said men are protectors and providers. And then he also said men not only have character, but build character in others. Yeah, and that yeah. is true. That's yeah. a very, very big mm -hmm. thing though, because we, we're not the, sometimes some of the Best attributes of a man are the things that that he does that go unnoticed. Because when you impart knowledge, time into whether your own children and, and let it don't let it be outside children and community, you don't know the ramifications of that until later on. Sometimes you blessed to hear them say it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't get to never hear them say it, but you see it in the way they carry their life out. Mm -hmm. And but but most of the time, if you if you look back on just being a man, it's it's something that you kind of once you kind of buy into it. Mm -hmm. you know, why I say that because everybody that gets grown still has not bought into what right. it means. Right, right. Because like you said, you said so many different attributes that require the selfish the selflessness was huge. Yes. Because it's, oh, it, yes, it, it's big, man. Uh, it you've been at that point before you begin have a family. You have been. A one person type That's right. of thing. That's right. Right. Sometimes some people are generous and all that, but in general, you've been just taking care of yourself. That's right. But you'll find out that it's better for them to have and than you That's when right. you have a family. Yeah. But but what I what I what I think was just the most important part of it though is watching a man struggle, mm. watching a man triumph, watching him struggle again. And then all the while, he still kept God first. Yeah, that's and right. that's the one. Like yeah. It's not about if you did perfect. It ain't right. about if you had all the money and bought me all the stuff I wanted. It's not about if that's you right. always prayed and, and, and I saw you on your knees all the time either. It's yeah. a combination of, of a lot of things. Yeah. It's a combination of selflessness, combination of tough time of being honest. Yeah, if right. you can't be real with nobody... You should be able to be real with your family. That's right. You're supposed to be able to be all the way transparent with your family. Yeah. And you're supposed to be able to say, hey, look, man. It's a little tough period right now, but this is how we're going to get through it. Yeah. Because everybody in the family, they, 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 they thrive off of the leadership. That's right. Yeah. And they'll feel better if you can lead. That's you don't right. always got to know the answer because you ain't required <laughs> to be the leader. Yeah. You just have to look to the father to be your leader. That's right. And if you're your leader, then when you talk to him, you can talk with confidence. That's right. And trust knowing that God got y'all back. That's so right. when you're talking to your kids, you don't want them more nervous than you. Right. So you have to have a, some a sense of confidence yeah. when you speak and the only way you have it, you yeah, have to know the right. Father. Yes. Because if you don't know the Father, you really don't right. know. I that's told right. you, you don't worry about things until you just don't have an answer. That's right. Word, when you have no answer, that creates worry. Yeah. But if you got an answer, then you just deal with an issue. It's just that's an right. issue. Yeah. That's right. Because there's always answers, man. And just yeah. That's why I say when concern, it's okay. It's bad when it becomes worrisome. You don't want it to get to where it's worrisome. You can be having concerns, but that's not worry. Right. Mm -hmm. When it gets to worse, and that can lead to other health issues and all, mental and emotional, mm -hmm. uh, when you have it. But man, yeah, jump in there, water. You know, you know what I always say about that. I said, if you worry, it controls you. Come on, ready now. Mm -hmm. But if you concern, you control it. That's true. All right, that's true. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's absolutely true. Yes, that's sir. true. Because you can just have concerns about, you know, if your if your kids doing good in school, you're not worried, but you're just concerned how they adjust it to college yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but worrying is worrying about you. Really, that's actually taking to another yeah, level. Right. It's it's they got past concerns, now, and now you worrying because you don't have an answer. That's right. Yeah. I never worried about things I had an answer for. Just think about that in yeah. life, though. Really. Yeah. 
even when it's tough though, you always if you got a plan, then you start working your plan, and it's, it kind of eliminates the worry because I've got something that I'm working toward. Right. The worry comes when I have no answer and I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. It's one thing I, I left out. Go ahead. Um, this is another part. Love. Yeah. When I tell you, being a man is you you will have to break down that strong barrier you have so that you can get so that you can impart love into whoever oh, you, yeah. you talking to, your Amen. wife, your son, or your daughter. Because see, see when you it don't matter the situation, you could be super mad and you give me a point across, you still have to show your son or your wife or your daughter that you love them and you have to talk to them. This is a communication um, generation. You, right. you you got to talk to them. You got to explain to them why this and why that. Remember, let love rule. Not your emotion, not your anger. I know love is emotion, but it's actually a gift from God when That's you right. receive it supernaturally. Right. So let your love outdo everything. Amen. When when you when you have an argument, when you have a, a tense conversation, whatever the situation is, you make sure before that sun fall down that you you get that straight. Listen. I did this because I love you. And you have to explain. Right. Love is an action, I'm, I'm sure. It's, it, to me, it's an action. Right? It's, it's something that you show. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I heard love is what love does. Okay, you have to love is this. Taking out the time when you know you're right and they don't understand you, but you're still going to go out your way so that they can understand you. Understand what I'm saying? See, when you're driving a point and they still don't agree, but you know it's best for them or for your family or for the situation, you can easily be mean and be and be hateful and spiteful and not clear the air so that they can understand that you wasn't being, uh, it wasn't what it seemed. You right. was just looking out. So love is patient and kind. So the Bible said love and kindness is how I draw thee. Mm -hmm. All right? So you have to go and you have to let them know this is why I did this. This is why I don't want you to do that. This is why we, this is why we should do it this way. Let love rule. Right. Don't let your ego rule. Don't let your pride rule. Right. Let love rule. Right. That's another great trait of a man. Real talk, man. Real talk. I <laughs> we touch it all. Let me see the yes, scriptures sir. that support this one right quick. Um, that was good. Yes, sir. First yeah. Corinthians 16 and 13, we kind of read it. It says, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Yes, be sir. courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. Just like yes, you sir. just said. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, that was, so I just had one for that one. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move on to day two. And uh, we're going to have Brother Tommy read day two. Day two is... Um, men cast a, men cast a big vision. Ooh. <laughs> All right, boys live only for today. They wait for inspiration to strike, or for someone to hand them their big break. Men dream of something bigger, mm. find it, then work towards it. The world and two often Christians are cynical of success and big dreams, but big dreams, big visions, and grand ambitions are sprinkled throughout the Bible. In fact, the giver of dreams says we don't dream big enough. Ephesians three twenty three. Mm. I'm not talking about creating a self-serving dream so we can pound our chest as bigger, faster, or stronger. King of the Hill is a boys game and the source of many of the problems in our world. Not to mention some of the more annoying cocktail party conversations. <laughs> We're all susceptible to self-serving dreams. As human beings, our motives in any endeavor will probably never be completely pure and altruistic. So what do we do? The answer is simple, but not easy. We keep going at the big, God-sized visions and humbly walk with our yes. God, Micah 6 8. Consider <clears throat> Nehemiah. This, man, this manly man is an Old Testament hero who dreamed big and sought to rebuild the protection right. walls around Jerusalem. The walls were once a source of national pride, but they have become indic indicative of their national disarray. In the midst of Nehemiah's attempt and eventual success, he was able to keep his vision about God and not himself. Yet there were critics who tried to get him off track, or specifically, off the wall. His detractors were distractors who attempted to get him to stop working toward the vision. Wow. Mm. One day, some boys called him out and accused him of not doing good work. Mm. He was working. They were criticizing. Mm. He was on the wall in sweat stained clothes. They were on the ground in religious garments. Mm. He shouted down to them, quote, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Mm. Why should the work stop while I leave and I come down to you? Mm. Mm. Quote, My love. Don't be afraid to dream big. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? How about something immeasurable more than we can ask or imagine? We can do this. It's not easy, but it's good. So let's get to work. Do you have a long-term vision for your life? If so, what is it? If not, why not? 
Is it big enough or have you downsized it? Man. Whoa, whoa. Mm. I can talk about that all day. Man, all right, here we go. <laughs> we serve a big God. Come on, sir. So why don't we have the authority to dream big? That's real. To to think big. Right. A lot of people will put God in a box. Come on. Like God is just this small little being and, and he can't do nothing for us. But we need to take God out of the box, man. Right. Because God is bigger than the box that we put him in. And as men, if we really want our family to follow us, we have to have a vision. Right. Come on with it, sir. Says that the, 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 the box says that we should write the vision mm -hmm. and okay. make it plain. So the people could run with it. So as men in our household, we have to have big visions. That's right. We can't say, we can't be in our house saying, well, uh, I, just, I just don't believe that God could do nothing for us. We have to believe that God, believe just like God wants us to believe. He wants us to have Everything in our lives. He wants us to have have blessings in our life. But we can't have them by, by thinking small. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to think big. That's right. yes, sir. If we want our children to look after us and, 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 and be better than us. Because I've I, I heard that all my life from my parents. I don't want you to be like me. Come I want you it. to be better. Come on with it. Yes, sir. So the thing about it is if we want our our children to be better than us, we have to provide them with the vision. Right. Yes, sir. That's what's up. That's good. That's just it. Yes, sir. To me, what I got out of this was what's very important to me is this. When you're a man of the house, when you're a man in a house, when you're a man, period, no situation that come to you should defeat you. Mm. You know, what, what, what I mean, I mean this. Know the God you serve. Mm. And I don't care what it look like. You have to plan for something great and you have to go after it. Right. Allow God to give you everything you need, the intellectual capacity, the strength, the, the inspiration you need so that you can apply your action, so you can put action into your application in life. Preach it, brother. Understand Preach. what I'm saying? You can't be defeated because you're on tough times. Right. Being a man on day two is simply honoring God and having faith in him like Abraham did. Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. But he knew that God was, he didn't know, but he trusted God. See, when you're a man, when you're on hard time, you got to trust God and know that he's going to come through. You can't give up, ball up, curl up, and run in the corner or closet That's when bad. you're a man in the house. You got to pray and you got to learn how to fight differently. You can't fight your battles like a little boy crying, whining, trying to bust somebody in the head. You got to fight your battles on your knees, meditation with prayer and faith and having belief in God. And I promise you that right there. It's going to open up a door for you. Yes, you you're going to know, well, how, how did this happen? How did this job come? I didn't fill out the application. But you forgot to fill out the application yes, a couple months ago because you're stressed. But because you put all your heart and all your time in God, God touched that woman that, the, the woman mind or that man mind to call you to look through them files because they need help. And they saw you when you walked in there with their integrity because you know when you walked in there, you got a family to feed. So you were in there respect. You went in there confident, and your confidence was not in you. It was in God because you know you are a servant. You are serving. He loves you. Being a man on this day, on day two, is simply knowing that God can provide if you can. That's awesome. That's right. That's awesome. Man, I got something uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm going to mess it up a little bit because uh, I'm messing <laughs> up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> but I'm going to give y'all the gist of it. But Sunday, you know, we had a pastor visit. He was on fire, man, and he was talking about. God and, and his glory and how big he is and how small we try to make it. Yeah. But he said that God is, no matter how far in outer space you travel on either end of the galaxy or the solar system, God will be there. God is 
God will be in the smallest of cracks and he'd be in the mm -hmm. highest of mountaintops. Mm -hmm. So he says, so in that case, then that means when we say stuff like God moved, God don't move, he was already there. He said, if he had to move, that would apply that he wasn't there <laughs> anyway. So he's there already. He, he said he, he wants to be exalted. He don't, you don't have to move. He said he was going to mess it up. He's that big. He, he's that big, we got to start looking at him like that. And looking man. at how high he is. He, 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 he was never there. That means he was always there, so if he's always there, there, he's that big. He's that big. You don't have so, to come down. To your individual so, party because well, hey, he was already there. We, was we already simply there. got to stop saying that God is moving right. because God don't never move. Y'all, man, man, you messed that up. Man. <laughs> you you messed that up. Some people think you never. That was a good idea. Man. I'm telling you, you messed that up, y'all. That was awesome. Man. <laughs> That was good. You never really think about that like that. Man, I'm telling you. What did you get that from, that man? Was good, man? That was good. Man, man. can go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, man. You know, we be saying it all the time. God moved in a situation. He didn't have to move. He didn't have to move. He's already there. He right. sold him up where right. he's supposed to be. Man. In your situation to move for you. And he said, also, remember this. Man. When we, when we respect him, as we should, and acknowledge he is who he says he is. He didn't always promise that you that he'll get you uh, out of a situation, but he'll be there to get to walk through it with you. Come and on, that's what man. you want. You that's want it. him to be there to walk through because he can save all situations. They they even use an illustration. Um, who was it? Jacob. He used Jacob yeah. when Jacob was was traveling and had to find a place to rest. He just needed somewhere to just lay his head down. Not that he wanted to stop there because he had a rock. Right. He made a rock into a pillow. It wasn't the place that he wanted to be, but he said that just be still, even if it's unintentional. Just be still so that God can do what he do. Yeah. He said sometimes you can stop because you just dog tired. You weren't even thinking nothing spiritual about it. But whatever it is that causes you to stop, that's all God needs. Because he said, now it's time for me to do what I do. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he wants to be exalted as such. And so I just thought that was like a key thing to talk yeah. about how big he is. And I thought about that. So you just messed like, it up. <laughs> <laughs> we can end it right now. That's it. <laughs> God, you got some good comments, man. Yeah, before we, and, and I'll let Brother Tommy share something. It said, uh, Brother, I mean, Reverend Jackson said that, hold on, he says that good men are the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. And that is real. And um, Arian, Ray Charles, your mother, said, don't give up on God because he will never give up on you. That's good. Yeah, That's good, man. Uh, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, man, you, you had anything you want yeah, to share, uh, man? Back to the visions. We have a lot of great examples of men who, who had visions, you know, Abraham, Moses, Job, mm -hmm. yeah. Nehemiah, Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. We see how tired they were, how at times they were uneasy, they were unsure. Yeah. You know, like they were just questioning things and they didn't know what was going to happen, but they trusted God. Right. And that's part of being a man too, trusting that God yes. will see you through. No, yes. you know, no matter how bad your times are, no matter what you're going through, no matter... You know what? No matter what you, what your circumstance is, you yeah. always you always have closure with God. That's right. Oh yeah. And with, with visions, we have a perfect example right now with horse. You know, he's opening yeah. up the second barber shop. Congrats to you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's a vision. I'm sure you had people, yeah. Yeah. Sure you had people along the way questioning, like, "What you sure you want to do? This gonna be a lot of work." You know, right. that yeah. Work. But look at he about to open up in a couple months, and that, that's God, man. That's wow. Like, that's vision. Right. That's right. the true right. definition right. of vision. That's right. He had a vision. He didn't give up. He didn't stop. And now he's opened up the second shop. That's what's wow. Up. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. We ain't here looking at all. <laughs> Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we can ask or think. That's it. Yes, sir. Great, 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 man. That was day two was like a no excuse, man. It just yeah, kills yeah. yeah. you. It's building you up for to what to wonder what we would get to by day seven. Yeah. Because uh, if you just did it and talked about how big God is, you could have made that a whole day. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have been a day. Mm -hmm. We could have really talked about it. But uh, I, I I think that everybody shares some valuable points, man. Some oh yeah. Great yeah. points. And yeah. How we got to start just acknowledging the fact that it's okay to dream big. Not only is it okay, God wants you to. That's because right. as long as you live and breathe, I think you're supposed to keep dreaming. That's right. Like, why Why are you supposed to put an age on it? Yeah. A time frame on it? You ain't die. So if you didn't die, I think you're supposed to keep dreaming, man. Yeah. So yeah. continue pushing yeah. this thing. I always tell y'all, I don't want to 
be resting and chilling. I don't want to retire on the porch with a rocker. I want to be wore out at the end of my journey. I want to be done, went through the whole thing nonstop until I can't do it no more. Because right. this is a gift, man. You don't have tomorrow promise. You yeah. don't know if it's going to be 80 or 8 days. Yeah. You don't know, man. So you yeah. can't be living expecting things that you just have no clue about. That's right. God knows, but you don't. That's so right. what I'm saying is why do we always be talking about settling down and retiring? Man, at the end of the day, yeah, your body will get tired or a little weary, but I notice that I get more energy the more I do. I don't know if anybody knows that, or if it works like that with people, but the most stuff that I do, I have more energy. Yeah. It seems like God gives you fuel to do the things that he designed you to do. Oh, yeah. Now, when you're not doing the things you designed to do, you will get wore out yeah. because that's not what you're supposed to do. It's yeah. like you put diesel in a gas that's supposed to have regular. Right. It ain't going to work good. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, or you put regular in a car that's supposed to have premium or plus. Yeah. It don't run its best quality, but when you do the things that you were purpose to do, yeah. not your man-made purpose, yeah. but the God divine purpose, oh, yeah. when you do that, it seems like all those things work in unison oh, and they yeah. come together. Yeah. The people that you meet, the relationship that you establish, yeah. the men that come in contact with you, yeah. and just start, you be looking at your life and like, wow, that's why I made it. I didn't yeah. know that. I met this man five years ago, yeah. and I even came back right. and manifested yeah. itself in some kind of way yeah. down the road. And you just don't know the relationships, the people that you meet, and why you meeting them. It seemed happenstance to you then, but nine times out of ten, it's not happenstance. It, it's not. It's listen. When you're on the interstate traveling, the only relation that you have with the driver or the car next to you is the fact that they're getting close to you. Yeah. But once you get off on your exit or they get off on the exit. Y'all yeah. have separated and you right. no longer share that same space that's with them. Right. So think about these little conversations that you have in the airport, in a grocery store, in, in a restaurant, wow. with people that you don't know. If you have got off on one exit before that or one chose another restaurant over that or didn't leave to leave to go out to eat that day, you wouldn't have shared whatever that conversation you had. So it's not happenstance. It's a reason why you, everywhere you are, it's a reason why the person that's sitting in the restaurant next to you is right. next to you. It's right. a reason why they bumped into you in the restaurant. Right. It's on purpose. I'm just telling you that a lot of times we take these things as we take them for granted and we don't acknowledge when it's something bigger than just that until something come back later on and remind you like, man, right. that's why I met that dude. Man, I've seen some of the most unusual things happen and I couldn't have, ain't no way in the world could have been put together unless it was orchestrated by God. You know what I'm saying? But when you when you when you're not doing your divine purpose, and we talked about purpose a lot in oh, yeah. like previous shows, you realize that you are spinning your wheels. Oh, and yeah. sometimes you can be working, but you seem like you're not moving. Because that's <laughs> not what you were designed to do. Once you, yeah, once you once you get into your your actual purpose though, mm -hmm. you're gonna notice that you ain't gonna work a day. You're like, go ahead. You see. The I'm like, this is why. What you what 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 what, what Horace just said? When you walking in your purpose, the reason why Horace feel like he is strengthened the more he do because what he do is what God ordained already. So what happens is when he go forward, he see his prize. See what I'm saying? See when you are doing your 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 work in the Lord, God will show you your blessing. Your, your heart, you will see your hearts, and what it does, it gives you inspiration. Horace, I ain't gonna tell him when he, he sought out this plan for his second barbershop, or when to add to his house. But he had that vision, and when he went at it, it came to pass. He guess what he said? Oh, I'm gonna do something else now. See, once you do what the Lord wants you to do, God will give you divine encouragement. The encouragement that man can't break. Can't nobody come to you and tell you, I don't think you should do it. Guess what? They may do it, but 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 it's not gonna distract you. Right. It, you you may you may hear it, but you won't receive it because you are spiritually connected to the Lord. And what the Lord has for you is for you, and you gonna know that. So as you do what you have to do in the Lord. You will see your blessings, yeah. your reward, yeah. and that will give you strength, energy, and encouragement, and it will empower you to keep on going. Right. Hey, man. What I noticed the most about visions, though, is that you've been blessed with a clear picture of the end, and now you just got to walk the steps backwards. Because right. you can't yes. have no vision and don't see the end. So when I see the end, that excites me. It's like I see a finish line. I got to get there. So he showed the end. I've been seeing it already. I saw the shops. I saw more than two. I saw a chain of them. I'm talking about South region wide. So then all I be doing is trying to see how can I put myself in position mm -hmm. to walk backwards and mm -hmm. fill them gaps yeah. in to get me where I'm trying to go. It's, 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 awesome. it's nothing different than somebody else having a dream or vision. Yeah. It's just that when, it, when I see it clearly, 
I, I see the end, and then that makes me have energy to get there. Yeah. It's like seeing a finish line when you done ran a race. Yeah. And when the finish line get there, some people burn out, but other people get a little more juice. Yeah. And it just gives me more juice. And that's just all that's it is. Awesome, that's awesome. That's, 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 that's so good. That's, that's man, we moving on to day three, man. We're going to minister to rest. Men take a stand. Hmm. Day three. Men take a stand. Winston Churchill is attributed, attributed as saying, you have enemies? Good. That means you stood up for something sometime in your life. That's right. But boys don't want enemies. They don't want anyone to dislike them. Mm. The moments that define us as men are when we choose to do something difficult that we know won't be a popular choice. Yeah. Today, I'm most disappointed about those times in my life when I had a transcendent prim primal awareness of what needed to be done but failed to take a minority position. A minority mm. position. Mm. That an unpopular position. Man. That's something. Mm. Once a person in leadership at something I was heading up had authority that didn't match their character. This person was divisive <clears throat> and built walls between people by sowing seeds of distrust. What disturbs me is not just that I didn't see it, but that I ignored counsel from those who did. Those who took a minority position and spoke truth. As a result, there was eventual, eventual carnage. Waiting for a bad situation to resolve itself rather than handling it right away always results in more pain. Mm -hmm. Controversially, the more experience we have in taking a minority position, the easier it becomes. It's great when you can be in a majority, but never allow the majority to dictate your beliefs and your actions. Come on with it. Good. Recently, I came across an article about a man named August Lenmezer. He was a shipbuilder in Nazi Germany. There, are, there is a famous photo of him at a ship dedication in which everyone is doing the salute to Hitler. Everyone except him. The majority of Germans in 1936 thought that they were doing the right thing by going along with the Nazi agenda. The, this guy took a minority position and it cost him. He was arrested and eventually drafted. Nobody knows what happened to him and why did he refuse by the way? Because he had a Jewish wife. That dude was a man. Mm -hmm. That man was right and that man was in the vast minority. Right. Guys, think about whatever it is right now that's on your heart in which you are in the minority and need to stand strong. Take a minority position in the little things so that when a big thing comes along, you develop the muscles you need to meet it head on. That's good. What discipline can you build into your life to strengthen your ability to take a minority position and withstand criticism? That's good. <laughs> man, I look at this man, and I'm just I'm just full up full right now because man, I just said this at my service yesterday. I said, Lord, I'm willing to take the back seat. That song that um Ernest Pew made, he said, Lord, I, I need your glory. I want your glory, Lord. Less of me and more of you yes, is what I need. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself willing to take the back seat on stuff and let God really, I mean, I mean this is for every man in here. Yes, you got to take the back seat when it comes to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correct. When, when, when you supersede over God, that's when pride come in, then. Mm hmm that's when deception come in. Yeah. So the thing about it is, I done got to the point of my life, fellas, man, I'm not worried about what people say. Come on with it, sir. That's I'm not worried about what, 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 what people could dictate in my life and yeah. try to dictate in my life. All that matters in my life right now is what God think about me. Yes, yes sir. Man, that's good. Yes, sir. And that's taking a stand. Yes, to be a man. Yes. The thing about it is, man, if it, the, the, the word says if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Yeah. So the thing about it is we, have, we as men have to go up and take a stand, man, and say that, Lord, I'm, I'm just dropping it all in your hands. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be ruled over nothing in 
my life. No. I don't want to. I don't want to seem like I'm taking your place in nothing in my life, Lord. Lord, you gonna lead me. You gonna navigate this thing. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. That that was a different spin on it because I wasn't really looking at it like that when they was talking about minority was. But when in that relationship with you and God, yeah. you are taking that that's minority that's position. Right. That's that's right. Right. I never really was thinking about that. Like I was thinking about more of causes and things that's going on in the world or things that may be a spiritual thing that you yes, got the world going against you and you actually standing for that and standing strong with all types of things going on in the world. You know we far removed from yeah. some of the ways that we were supposed to have been built on. Some mm -hmm. of the some of the some of the core values that the country say that we built on, we far removed from a lot of that stuff right now. Um, and we just seem like we kind of just let everything go, mm -hmm. you know, do as you will and everything is just going right yeah. now. And so to stand for something, a lot of people lose money and all. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they say, make any little stand that they know is right, they, they have to be willing to understand that they might be persecuted. Oh, yeah. uh, people right. go to jail. They'll find a reason to say that you're kind of losing your mind, you're looming. They want to put you in, in uh, 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 institutions yeah. when you speak out against the vast majority, the majority. So to be a minority... Like you said, you would like to be the majority sometimes, great. Oh, yeah. But don't never let the majority dictate what your core values and beliefs already are. You know who you are, and you can't. You cannot let the world change you. The word said what the word said, and that's always the same. Yeah. So sometimes the world will switch it up and try to give you their interpretation of that. Yeah. And they come up with these other religions that kind of use a different Bible. You know, they kind of pattern a little yeah. bit off the Bible, yeah. but they kind of yeah. get away from things that they don't want to and they don't agree with yeah. but you just got to know in your heart man you got to have a relationship with God and you got to yeah. stand for what it is that you believe in and sometimes when you say it out loud because again you're not going to always be able to be in the closet with God oh, yeah. you ain't always be able to hide about God you ain't always be able to mm -hmm. you know just do it in the privacy of your own home the real God that I know mm -hmm. he wants people to know about That's right, right. <laughs> and he gonna create situations where you gonna have an opportunity to talk about it and you ain't always gotta walk around no bible in your hand and preaching mm -hmm. to people it'll just be normal everyday circumstances where the opportunity will allow itself for you to speak to them and they gonna That's sometimes right. you don't even have to say nothing about god the best example is when they see god in you That's it. the best one like because they'll say something different about you they don't even know what to call it sometimes they'll just say something different about you mm -hmm. and then when you when they say that that's your opportunity to go ahead and exalt the Father. That's so right. anyway, man, that's good. Good stuff, man. That was a good day three. Man, man take a stand. Yeah. yeah. When I listen to day three, man, take a stand. This is what comes to my mind. When you taking a stand for the right cause, but everybody think it's wrong. Mm. When you get punched, you, you remain. When you get pushed, you remain. When you hurt, you remain. When you're broken, you remain. Mm. Remain standing. When it seems that persecution is coming to you left and yeah, from the right man. and from your backside, even in your face, because sometimes it be the people that you see directly in your face that will persecute you for your stand that you've taken. That goes against what they believe. Yeah. Take a stand as a man. To me is taking a stand. And standing on the word of God. Mm. Being an example. My pastor told me. Why you think they ain't going to persecute you? <laughs> why not you? What? Mm. Why this happened to me? Why I got to go? Why not? What? Are we better than our father God? What? Mm. That's good. We going to we gonna have to take the stand. We gotta go through long suffering, mm. persecution. Come on with it. Come on with it, That's why it's important for us to receive the fruit, the fruit, the gift, his spirit. That way we can have the patience. That way we can be meekful in our situation so we can stay humble, so that we can be kind, so that we can have the patience, so that we can go through forbearance. Guess what? You're gonna have to be wrong, but you right. You're gonna have to take wrong for right. right. You're gonna have to do that. Jesus did. This is a critical, scratch that, it's not critical. This is one of the toughest parts or attributes or components of a man is taking a stand, yeah. but not any stand. Right. A stand that's right in the eyesight of God yeah, yeah. and everybody's minds are corrupted to think that this is right and that ain't right. But the words say this. Right. And you got to take that stand and be minority. 
That's right. You can't be with a popular crowd. You can't be in major, you can't be in a major major room with a whole bunch of people drinking you drinking whatever you're drinking. Everybody having a cock a doodle fight. Well, this is how I do this. But the words say this, and you gotta be ready for them fiery darts. That's why when you take a stand, you gotta stand with the whole yeah. arm of Come God. Come on with it, man. Huh? Come on. You gotta with stand with the whole arm of God. When you take a stand, to me as a man, it's taking a stand in a spiritual concept. When you put on the whole arm of God That's it. and stand on the word. That's a wrap. Yeah. That's a wrap. Well, what you got to say about taking a stand as a man? When I think about that, I look at Paul. And just like this brother, just piggybacking on what he just said. Uh, Paul said, beginning in that chapter of Ephesians 6, he says, look here, finally, my brother. Mm. In mm. other words, what he's saying, just because you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, don't think you're exempt yeah. from persecution yes, sir. and going through stuff. Like you're saying, being a part of that uh, 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 minority. He said, finally, my brother, you say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might that you yes. may be able to stand. Somebody say stand. 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 In the wilds of the devil. You yes. be, and see, you're not standing alone. You're not standing in your own ability. You're not standing in your own intellect. You're not standing in your own strength, but you're standing in the might of God. That's yes, sir. Woo. You can't do this by yourself. That's right. You can't even be a man standing up by yes, yourself sir. without That's God. Right. You can't do this. Right. And then his brother just, like he said, strapping on the whole arm of God. Yeah. What he's saying here, having your loins girded about with truth, your integrity, yes, your honesty. Right. You hear him putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? I'm talking about because the enemy, just like back in the day, having that breastplate, they shooting fiery darts at vital yes, organs in your body. Yes, this yes, is the things that would just take you out. That's, right. That's why even the police today, they understand the concept that if they, if they wear those flag blasts, it's going to protect vital organs. Right. So the enemy is shooting darts. Yes, sir. At your vital, he's shooting at your emotions. Mm. He's shooting at your feeling. Mm. Because you know how it is. We have a tendency to react rather than respond. Right. Mm. You hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. Yes, sir. Right. I'm All right. Then you think, go down to the next one, talking about having your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Not just talking about putting on, or uh, going to share the gospel. How many of you play football? Uh, yes, sir. If you went to the dome, played with cliques that you played on the field with, what effect are you going to have? Right. Yeah, you got to have on the right kind of shoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you have on the wrong kind of shoes with somebody throwing a sword at you and you slip, your head is yes, gone. Yes, sir. You don't have no traction, yes, nothing. Having on the right shoes for the right battle. Yes, That's it. Then you got to have what? Put it on the, the, the shield of faith. Yes. He say, already gonna, I'm already going to give you some things to do with to, to defend yourself, but I'm going to double it up now. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm going to doubly protect you by having the, the shield of faith. Right. You know, because when they start shooting those fire darts at you, you don't want just wood because it's going to burn up. Yes, sir. When they're shooting at you, it's going to burn up. Yes. Then you got to be ready. All right. It ain't just a defensive battle. Right. That's right. He say, now nah, I want you to get strapped up. Come on. Because now you're finna go to war. You're yes, going to sir. go on offense. I yes, want you sir. to have on, put, get the sword of, you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The sword of the spirit. Yes, sir. At the helmet of salvation. Yes, sir. When Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan came at him after being, after fasting for more than 40 days, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now you got to think, now he, he's home. Yeah, Not he only is he home, he's straight up thirsty. Yes, sir. But he's still a man, right? Yes, yes, sir. Now watch this. And in his weakest moment, he was able to muster up strength. See, that's what we was talking about. Even man, when sometimes it just feel like you can't see it. Yes, sir. God give you that little energy, that little boot. That's right. Say, I got you now. That's right. That's so, it. but the thing is, I want you to understand, if you've been in the military and you learn how to operate an M16, mm -hmm. how to unload it, load it, break it down, being blind, for, you know your weapon, right? Mm -hmm. What is our weapon in the spiritual warfare? The Bible. Yeah, right. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If you have the weapon and can't use it, what? why have it? Yeah, right. You got it loaded yeah, you know what and don't know yeah, how to take it off yeah, safety when, when when you got enemy in front and don't know how to use it, you in trouble. That's it. Here it is. I want you to look at it. Even in your weakest moment, he's tired, he's hungry, he's thirsty. And the enemy knows this, right? right. And he, he comes upon him. He approaches him. Man, look, 
you know, you can be a little bit selfish. Mm. You know you're home. Go ahead. Turn those stones into bread. Mm -hmm. Pull back the bolt. Put it back in there. He locked it low. <laughs> Man, you that's that live. Live. You hear what I'm saying? That's how you combat right. spiritual warfare. My that's God, that's good. My God. And I'm gonna, let me ask you something. The Holy Spirit just, <laughs> just brought something to the thing. All of that stuff that you just put on is protecting your front. Come on now. Why is it protecting your front? You, you, because you. God got your back. There you go, man. That's good. That's good. You hear me? <laughs> But check this out though. How many times you've heard spiritual leaders say, yeah. I'm not going on that corner? Yeah, you hear something. Yes, uh, yeah. Man, yes, those uh, guys are crazy out there. Man. But if you strapped up though, yes, come, on. Uh, come on. If if you strap up, that's right. You're not operating in your own ability that's and your own right. strength. Yeah. He already said, he, right. he said, put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. Yeah. And in the power of his, his might. might. His might. Not yours. Right. Yeah. But when you hear pastors, when you hear preachers say, man, man I ain't going out there on no corner with them crazy people. Oh, no, man. That means you scared. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and God didn't give us a spirit right. here. Come on. Power and a love. Watch nice. this though. You know, even in being a man, he, 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 you're talking about humility here, mm -hmm. and you're talking about being a minority. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He who saves his life hmm. shall lose. It. That's right. That's right. And he that loses it for my sake, man, you say something, man. Shall find it. Yes, sir. Yes, Paul, Paul put it this way. I'm talking about a real man. Yes, sir. Yeah. For me to live. Huh. It's Christ. And to die. It's gay. Yes, sir. Yeah. But when you become selfish and say, no, this, this, I mean, right. that ain't me. Right, right. Is that a man? That's not, not, the, not the one we talking about. Hello? You know when we talked about a few weeks ago and I said, well, where we did, God begins. Yes, you know, sir. A lot of times you'll be brought to places. It's not that God did it to you, but he allowed things to happen. Yeah. And bring you to your, what we would say, our weakest point. And some people figure they so, they had such a terrible state that they so far removed from God, he cannot, there's no way he could right. Right, to deal with me mm -hmm. right now. Right. But that's when God said, now, now that you done got yourself out the way, you right. can't do no more for yourself now. Yeah. Now I'm going to step up, I'm going to show you my true power and yeah, what yeah. I can really do. So sometimes when we say we at our worst, though, we that's have a right. perfect place that's for God. That's right. God loves a lot of times some of those things that you talk about not having as a man, like right. ego pride, they be yeah. in the way. Sometimes they do stop God from doing what he wants to do yeah. because we don't allow him to do his what his role is. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you get sometimes to your most destitute place, right? Work, I mean, you just can't see nothing worse than where you're at today. Rock bottom, like they say. And then you'll notice that's when God steps in and pulls you yeah. out of there. And that, not only does he does it and it's a big deal in your regular life, but it's a huge testimony. Because you know that it was nothing that you did. Yeah, so when you talk to somebody about him, you're going to be able to say it with all conviction. Yeah. That it was nothing that I could do. I was, there yeah. about I was at the very last of my last. Right. And when I pulled, it's nothing but God that did it. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm saying. That's how yeah, you exalt you. Right. That's how you exalt you. Can, can I just say one more yeah, thing? Yeah, jump on. Okay, boom. The other thing is, too. Still talking about the, uh, the minority. In Matthew, it says, blessed are the meek. Hmm. For they are the one that shall inherit the earth. That's right? it. Yes, sir. Now I want you to visualize this. Anybody can be a brawl, go up and just rip up and tear up anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Just straight up crazy, right? Mm -hmm. right? But it takes a real man to be me. Yes. Now watch this. That's all too. It's referred to as power under control. That's it. Oh, uh, man. Visualize a horse in a horse race. That's uh -huh. right. He's in the chute, ready to take off. Right. He's ripping with nothing but muscle, right? right? Right. I mean, this thing is ready to go. Nothing but pop. Right. Yeah. What's controlling it, though? This little jockey. A 90 pound jockey right. and a bride. Right. Which is the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Man. Power under control. Wow. That's a real man. man. That's good, yeah, man. Did you do the supporting scriptures? Nah, I 
I got this one. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Yes. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Yeah. And many there be which go in therein. 14 verse. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find. Wow. Yeah, wow. man. So we gonna, it's like I said, this is a seven day plan. We're gonna do four days, and we'll probably actually finish this one next time and do the other three. But we're gonna we're gonna stop today after day four, and we'll give each, each person a chance to you know share some last co commentary that they want to share in regard to. So. Hot tonight, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, day four. Day four. Men are team players. Yes, yes. Right? Ephesians 4 and 12. Mm -hmm. We think lone wolves are dark, mysterious, and strong. They are the stuff of legends. The truth, the truth about lone wolves, however, which I learned from the animal trainer in the mountains of Montana who owns previously wild wolves. It is that they are weak, malnourished, and have short lives. Wolves need a pack with each to circle and kill an animal. They need a pack to huddle with for warmth and protection. Long wolves don't get enough to eat and they die prematurely and alone. Man. Long wolves are losers. <laughs> <laughs> I see why. Well, in in the wild, long in, in the wild, long wolves can't can't thrive, can't thrive. Nor in life can men thrive along and on their own. We may be able to fund an early retirement on on our own. But we can't truly experience the and enjoy life without some brothers. All right. Yeah, yes. Worse yet, we all can uh permanent or uh, temporary weak weak weaknesses that a brother can help us navigate through or even overcome. Mm -hmm. If there was only one spirit spiritual disciple, I could immediately give to you, what would you think? I mean, what would, what would, what would, what do you think it would be? Some might say reading the Bible, wrong. Some might say prayer, wrong. Some might say going to church, still wrong. Cynics. Cynics might expect this Made a church pastor to say giving more money away. Wrong yet again. <laughs> if there is one discipline I could impart to every man, it could it would be this. Choose the right friends and leverage them wisely. Yes, wow. yes. In this book, Love and Survival, the scientists based for the Healing power of intimacy. Doctor Dean R. Arnish wrote. I mean, speaks to the importance of relationships. I am not aware of any other factor in medicine. Not diet. Not smoking. Not exercising. Not stress. Not genetics. Not drugs. Not surgery. That has greater impact on our quality of life, incident of illness and premature death from all causes. We will physically die earlier if we don't have great friends. Mm -hmm. And that will be after we have already died spiritually. Whoa. And in fact, if we do have great friends, we are spiritually dead 
If we don't have great friends, we're spiritually dead already. Mm. I've been, I've seen it too many times to be convinced otherwise. Male relationship, male friendship is a spiritual discipline. And it needs to be elevated if we know how to maintain strong godly friendships we will make fewer mistakes in our lives and we will recover more quickly from those we do we do make yes sir man i'm so glad that i got some friends Come on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey that means that means that, that, that we going we gonna live some long lives yes sir because <laughs> i know i can come to any one of these brothers in here yes and I can talk to them about what I'm going through in my life and they'll listen brother. to me. Come yeah, on with it, man. So the thing about it is, man, that they're right. When we when we have a strong relationship with godly men in our life, yeah. and, 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 and just have strong relationships, period, we'll be able to be all right, man. Because the thing about it is, uh, when we have a brother that we can just rely on and and, and, and lean to for for their godly support, man. God is God. Is, God is building up some great things when yes, he sir, do these things. Yes, sir. Because the thing about it is, man, you you could you could go to uh, somebody that's not saved, and they're gonna give you the wrong advice anyway. But you rather have that person that's spiritual and that's godly and that's on your on your level of, of integrity, and they'll be able to. Pull you in and let you know, hey man, this this is the way God wanted to be done, mm -hmm. and you'll have to do it that way, man. It's, it's always good to have friends that are God. That's yeah. good, hey, man. Let me let me share something right quick. Um, really, man. Um, that this was like a, a big important day. Yeah, day four because it, it didn't just say that it was cool to have friends. It was it was necessary. Necessary. And and it also told you if you did not have them, you would die soon. Yeah. Um and you gotta understand why it's saying that, because what friends bring to you. Oh yeah. Good friends. Oh yeah. But I don't know why I'm this way. But I'm a person that likes to be private about my personal stuff. But having this opportunity to share with y'all, it allows me an opportunity to be able to talk to people that's not just mental. Yeah. But they just men just like me. Yes, sir. And they're going to encourage me at the same time. It's Because it's not about if you're always doing right. Yeah. It's when you do bad or do wrong and somebody be able to uplift you. Amen. You know what I'm saying? They got regular yeah. people in the world. We're not perfect, man. I'm not going to sit up here and act like it's been all gravy all the time. Oh, yeah. But the best thing for me, because I know I would love to keep stuff to myself naturally. That's just me. I'm, not that I'm hiding. I just don't know why I'm built that way. But this is allows me an opportunity to get it off of me. Yeah. You see, when I get it off of me, it got other people that can take some of that. Yes, and That's then right. they can share things they've gone through and it makes me feel like I'm not alone and whatever that is. Because yeah. as a man, being the oldest sibling and all that stuff, you be having internal things that you put on yourself. I don't know if people did it, but you did. So you want to live up to certain things. You want to be this for different people. You want to be somebody that people can be proud of, your brothers and sisters and all. That's great. But then you be like, who I got? You know? Yeah. Yeah. My big brother, you know what I'm saying? So it's your father, if he's there, but aside from him. who? So when you're the oldest, you'd be thinking like, I got to take it from everybody, but I don't have nobody to hand it to. Oh, yeah. And so this helps me kind of get out of that. It helps me be able to talk and share mm -hmm. just day-to-day -day stuff and not feeling bad and wrong behind it. Because in churches, that's big, big churches, they like to call them cell groups or B groups where you get to yeah. partner with people that's walking the same life that you walk in and they can encourage you. They might be farther along than you. They may be uh, just starting with you. They may be at the exact same rate pace you are, but when you can call somebody on the phone or meet with somebody on the phone that is godly and trying to live and do right, that time when you was about to fall all the way off and just having that little pep talk, that'll give you juice to make it through that rest yeah. of that week when you was having a tough time. So you do need people to talk to. And I didn't know how important it was for you to have men as a man to talk to. Mm -hmm. As a man, you just be thinking like it's all right. But it's not just all right. It's necessary. You got to have somebody to talk to. That don't mean that you got to be selective, though. You got to, you know, you just not. it's not just anybody. You got to think about it. It's godly men. Mm -hmm. You know, men that have something to share. Uh -huh. And then men that also are transparent with you. And people that you, you don't want to dishonor their trust. 
and they don't right. want to dishonor your trust. Right. You can feel yeah. safe with them. It's not every person, so you got to ask God to give you the spiritual yeah. discernment. So that you can tell and select yeah, these people. Right but that's when you true. do have them and you feel comfortable in them, God has it designed that way for you to be able to lay some of your troubles on them. That's and right. not that your troubles immediately subside, but I promise you, you have a spiritual up uplifting right. and a physical uplifting right. when you unload some of that off you. If I was that's trying right. to carry something that was 400 pounds, it's very easy to know that if I had four dudes, everybody picking up some slack. <laughs> it's going to be a little light on me. Right. And that's just simple. That sometimes the world can beat men down. Not just black men, but especially oh, black yeah. men sometimes. Yeah, 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 but yeah, in yeah. general, though, yeah. men have so many roles and things, that expectations that's placed upon them. And that's good. It's not a bad thing. That's, that's just the way it's designed. That's right. But sometimes we don't have anybody, or we feel we don't have anybody to unload right. some of those worries over to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm glad to have a yes, opportunity sir. to be the yeah, talk because too. one of my number one things that I have been saying for probably more than a decade was I want to start talking to my friends about the Lord. Like I want to be able to share that. Just like we talk about football and sit down, I want to be able to have them over yeah. with their wives and stuff and I want to be able to have conversations where you can, it's the scripture and it's scripturally based Oh, yeah. But it's real stuff going on. Yeah. It's right. stuff happening, man. Everything is not just in the Bible. Like I'm saying, like the Bible has solutions for everything you're going through. Right. But some of the stuff that we're going through, everybody is not that far along in their spiritual right. walk with God. Right. Right. Some people need somebody to be able to talk to and look at directly across right. from them. And somebody can share a story or testimony when they was in the same rut. And believe it or not, by y'all back sharing that with each other, it helps you kind of get through that moment. Like they say, right. you're not going to be removed or, or or you won't be absent from problems, mm -hmm. but you'll have someone that's to right. help you get through. Yeah, and that's, that's, what, that's what I think that was mm -hmm. a big deal about men being team players. Right. That's what we got to build trust with one another. And we got to make people feel comfortable to come to us, man. Jump on. Yeah, personally, this day hit me different because I can relate to it on so many levels. God put in my spirit to testify that you know, when I was going through depression states and things like that, I feel like I didn't have a lot of people. And by the people I did go to, I felt kind of judged, like they didn't understand. And it all started with Horace when he asked me what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ever since then, something just clicked for me. I've been so peaceful, I've been mm -hmm. so joyful, I've been feeling that I can trust somebody. Yeah, somebody yeah, you know, right, right, a big right. brother to look up to. Right, right, right. right. And ever since I met Horace, I mean, I've been meeting other people, Brother Therese, uh, nice. I've been meeting them too, big, big brothers and big mentors oh, to yeah, look up to and learn sure. from. And that's a good feeling, man. And like, especially at this age, like you said, you want to just sit down and talk to God about people, like right. to, to, right. to people. Yeah. But my age group, you know, it's not a lot of people I can just do that with. You know, people are worrying about worldly things. I'm not. You know, I don't, yeah. just certain things I don't want to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's just, man, this walk with God has been amazing. You know, when I found God, it was just the it was literally the best things that happened to me. Come on, man. Come on. Continue to meet people and God's yes, continue, sir. you know, <laughs> giving opportunities to speak about the things I've been going through. You know, with this real talk thing, I would never thought I'd be doing this every Monday, but I am. That's all it's all God. Of course, it's all God. Then yesterday, you know, I did a um a little thing yesterday at his church. You know, it's just different opportunities God has given me. Yeah. At this young age, it feels so good. I feel like he trusts me enough to yes. to yes. not lead people astray. Yes. I never want to talk and lead nobody the wrong way. Yeah. Right. And lastly, with the friends, you know, having people that you can look up to and, and yes. keep you accountable. Oh, Come yeah, on, yeah, 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 yeah. real friends. I'll tell you, you know, hey, it's not, you know, time is not right. Don't right, do that. But your other right. friends, oh, you all good. Don't worry about it. Right, right, really, yeah, you know, right. messing up bad. Right, right, right. Your, right, friends, right, not, your right. real friends gonna tell you when you're messing up. Your real true. friends yes, gonna so. keep you accountable and keep your head up and, like you said, uplift you. That's a good word. I like so. that, uplift yeah. you. So and just to keep to continue to encourage you and, and be there for you. That's, yeah, that's what we need. That's what we all need. Right. That's awesome. That's a blessing. Right. I got. I got out of that day. Um, I put myself in it, you know. Men, sometimes we we eternalize everything. That's why it's important to have friends. But like Corey said, be selective. Mm -hmm. You know, have have friends that's going to support your 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 strong move of standing on the word. Mm -hmm. Have friends that's going to like Corey said again, uplift you and encourage you to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. See, my pastor told me, uh, he said, association 
brains are on simulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so whoever you around, right. you know, that's pretty much you looking at your future. That's right. Okay. So be mindful, be watchful, and 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 and, and, and note that your flesh is hungry. Okay. So it's gonna be easy to feed that flesh. Have some have friends that that feeds a spirit. Right. Have men that 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 will tell you. The Lord wants you to do this. The Lord wants you to do that. The word say this. The word say that. Don't have friends that that tell you, man, I'll do this. Man, I'll do that. Let's yeah. let's have friends in our life. Let's have our circle filled with men that who that's going to stand on the word. Yes, see, that's the importance. See, 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 see. What it is? It's like a marriage. It's, it, it, we supposed to bring each other closer to God. It's, right. it's, 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 we 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 united to to work for the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Right. Okay. So when you have friends, make sure that they hold you accountable for that's the right. right things in life. That's Amen. Right. Okay. So that's my input on it. Make sure that you pick people that's going to that you see a future in. Like I don't want listen. I don't want to be around nobody, and I'm the and I'm the one that got the most money in the room. What, Something wrong. What I told yeah. you about that. That's right. You always the average of your that's circle. That's right. Yeah. So what? That's good or bad? So increase your circle. That's right. So that your average is not bad. That's right. So if you, yeah. if my average around enough of millionaires, and I'm going to be dealing with money and finances. Then being an average of that, that means that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But if if average is we ain't got but ten dollars, and the top dude got twenty. You know, the average of that is 10. Right, right, so right. they said if you increase your circle, though, expand your circle. So mm -hmm. the average not necessarily a bad thing. We look at average as kind of a negative thing, but it's just relative to the circle that you have. Because mm -hmm. if you got a circle and everybody in that circle is on fire for Christ, and you're the average of that, that's where you want to be. Right. It's just So you just got to elevate the circle. Expand that circle so that it, you're not the best of it and you ain't the worst of it, but you definitely want to be increasing that circle so that when, you, when someone says you are the average of everybody you hang around, everybody you associate with, that don't necessarily need to be a negative thing. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? And if yeah. you're trying to do the right thing, being the average of that circle is a great thing. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's that right. means every man that's around me has some type of relationship with God. Then they And they are holding each other accountable. So if I'm the average of that group, that's a cool group to be the average yeah. of. You understand what I'm saying? That's all right there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right. That's good. Support uh, Ephesians 4 and 13 mm -hmm. says, Enter. Whoa, whoa. it's changed on me. Yeah. yeah. Ephesians 4 and 12, it says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And the the, 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 the three fold cord is not easily broken. Amen. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I enjoyed it, man. Yeah. I, love it. Yeah. I enjoyed it, man. Before we wrap it up, man, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to just share their last commentary before we close it out. And we'll finish our uh, days five through seven on next Monday. But just going around the room, so I want my father, we'll come around and everybody just can give their last commentary that they want to share with, in regards to today's lesson and discussion. Okay. Just want to not so much become a devil's advocate, but I just want you to ponder everything that's been said along with these. The Bible says a wise man will hear and increase mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. and a man of understanding will attain unto a wise counsel. That means you don't have it all. Mm -hmm. You don't know it all. That's right. And you're ever learning. That's right. You're ever seeking to know more about God and the wisdom that he has, it comes directly from him. But a wise man will increase learning. Never get to the point where you just start and say, I got it all. I don't need this. No right. That's, right. That's when he's ready to die. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? But all, along with that, too, uh, I was talking about some things about um, being a man, being a father, and all this stuff. Uh, I've heard some things about uh, single parents, women in the house. Uh, here's a negative aspect, aspect, but at the same time, it's positive. Now, I want you guys to to think about this too now. Right. Why, the question is, why are there a lot of single women oh, yeah. raising their children? Right. Now, here's a Bible scripture that, that will really point that out. The Bible says that a wise son is the gladness of his father, mm -hmm. but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Yeah. 
Wow. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Wow. All right. How many times have you known marriage, families, because of that son in and out of jail, mom has put the whole house up for bail yeah. wow. and lost all. How many of you know because of that son in and out of jail, she sacrificed her husband for that son. Right. Mm. She's undermined it. And when, when I say this, I don't, I don't, don't take it negatively, just all women are like this. Right. But right. I want, don't just say because a woman is raising a child right. by herself. Understand there's more than one side to this. Right. Mm -hmm. Because a father wants to be a father to yes, his sir. children. That's right. Yes, sir. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So the thing is, wisdom, a wise man will hear increase learning. Man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. Let God talk to you. Yes, sir. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Before you hear or think about, well, you know, that man, he just left his family. But most important to a man in his family is respect. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are y'all feeling it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Most definitely. It's respect. That's real. Another thing is about success. There's nothing wrong with ambition. There's nothing wrong with desires. Nothing wrong with even having a goal. And see, the thing is, What's so amazing about God? He's given us the mind to be able to do this and create stuff. He gave us that. That's it. He gave us that. Yeah. But listen to this. It says here, he, he don't mind you having ambition, desires, goals, right. plans. But he said, many are the plans in a man's heart. Mm. But only the purpose of God shall prevail. That's right. mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes. Only the purpose of God. Since the thing is, before we even think about our desires, how does God register with this? What is it? Mm -hmm. uh, listen to what it says over there in Matthew. It says, seek you what? First, right. mm -hmm. the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Yes. Then all these other things shall be added unto you. Yes. Man. That's good. 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 That's Men, man, I'm, I'm reminded of some uh, instances of other lessons. Uh, we said that uh, I remember Horace saying it a little bit sticking in my mind. He said, whatever a man is spending his money on is what he trusts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, time. And and time. time. And his time. His time and his money on, that's what he trusts. And uh, I would like to uh, add with that with a very whatever that is in a man's heart. So is, he. so is he. So the thing about it is, if, if whatever we trust within our heart as men, whatever yeah. we uh, have within our spirits as men, is this is who we're gonna become. So if God, if we want to become more godly men, if we want to become a more of example for our families, we have to have the word of God in our heart. Mm -hmm. so, that's great. That's, right. that's great. Um, my my last comment. Trust God with all your heart. Come on with it, Donnie. Yes, sir. And lean not to your own understanding. That's what's up. Acknowledge God in all your ways, everything you do. And expect God to bless you in your life. Mm -hmm. Keep the faith and stand strong on the word of God. Never give up on God because he will never give up on you. That's what's up. That's good, man. Real talk. Mm -hmm. Real talk. I just, all y'all, you know, y'all did, y'all just explained it well. Because like you said, you know, trust God, you know. I can attest to that, man. I, I was, like I said, I was at my lowest, you know, crying every night, things like that. I just thought I just wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to see my way through. But God continues to put people in my life that, you know, can help me. And he puts people in my life that I can help. Yeah. So I'm going to be a little brother, you know, to them and be That's a big brother to other people. That's so, what's yeah, right. That's right. I, I feel like I'm average, as you see. That's right. When you, a big brother and a little brother, it's average. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. You know, just That's trust true. God, man. Read the word. So, you know, it's... You can get through anything, man. Anything. Amen. I'm str I, have a, I have a struggle, you know. We all have struggles. But our purpose, you know, and our will is to please God. And that's, that's right. what we're going to do. And God's going to always see us through the night when we do. That's, so that's right. right. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, that's great, man. Like what uh, 
This was was good, man. Like good. Sometimes the, some of the best ones is when they're impromptu. You know, weather was looking all kind of crazy. Like they didn't want to let it happen. Wi-Fi. I didn't know how the Wi-Fi was going to be, but it's it's been it's perfect. You know, yeah, love, man. Yeah. And um, the biggest thing that I get from today's lesson though on the rail was some of the strongest attributes of a man are the ones that seem the weakest. Yeah. Let me explain that to you. Yeah. Because the best things about being a real man is humility, yeah. 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 meekness, mm -hmm. selflessness, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And those are the things that you would think would be counterproductive or counter uh, to what, what we would call bravo type of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a macho type. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, these are the, the, it takes much more of a man to reason through yeah. A, 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 a conflict, yeah, because you just know the right thing to do, yeah. And sometimes the man part of you, the ego part of you, the pride part of you, wants to go back and forth, with right? It. And 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 it takes more of a man to actually. And I know this sometime in our world they'll make this seem cowardly, but truthfully, you just don't say you're that. a real man right. because you thought about the consequences. Right. You right. understand what I'm saying? That's right. Some things don't call for the action that some we want to give. Uh -huh. it, so some sometimes, and people used to say this all the time. You can't have arguments when one person's off. Right. So you can use that. And it's true, though, because yeah. they have talking loud. Try it, though. It's tough, because if you are brought, if you grew up with that little yeah. eye for eye, they yeah. don't seem to go with that. Right. But if you just, you just got to know when it's time to do that. There's yeah. so many times in life when you really oh, yeah. will have to stand strong like that. Yeah. But a lot of times, a lot of things can be uh, dealt with by just being, taking the high road. Yeah. Yeah. You'll say, why? What? The, how does that make me look strong? Because... Everything in you wanted to do something. Yeah. Right. You held all that down. That's strength. That's that's the pressure. And that's what I think is also. Yes, that's what's also. Um, a couple comments I'll read before we get out of here. Uh, Pastor Jackson was saying there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. And was, that's Proverbs 18 and 24. Uh, Kawana Robertson was saying, so proud of you, Tommy. And your mother said, Bell has <laughs> not been in our budget. God is so good. He rarely asks for anything except love and support. A humble, grateful child. Amen. And she wow. said that she had been a witness to you being stronger with Christ. She said man, she's a witness man, to that. So that's awesome, man, man for your mama. Hey, hey, tune man, in and check man, it out. So anyway, y'all know how we do it, man. I enjoyed that. I hope you guys yeah. got a chance to watch this. Please share this to y'all page so people can get a chance to tune in. If they missed it live, you can go back and watch it. Of course, at the end of the show, I always upload it to YouTube, Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. So it will be uploaded at some point this evening. So please check it out. Please tag and share so other people can get a chance to see this. A uh, wonderful discussion, man. I think man. that uh, I think that what we wanted to get across was accomplished, and I'm glad God used man. this vessel and this channel and this medium to get out a positive message and what real men are. Man. So without further ado, y'all know how it goes. It's not about being liked. It's not about how people feel as long as you make sure that whatever you say, you bring passion, you show respect, but most importantly, you keep it real. And it's Real Talk, Kingdom Discussions, episode 49. It's in the books. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I lose my way once in a while. <laughs>